Hey guys, today I want to talk about how I'm able to do CC squats, pistols, the knees over toes version of the split squats and other exercises with a torn meniscus without feeling pain or injuring myself. What's up? Nakshan here. I create videos about self-developed movement, meaning how to grow with your mind and your body. So if you're into bettering yourself, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing to understand is what are the meniscuses and what happens when they are torn. So the meniscus is a cartilage located in the knee in two places, one towards the outside of the knee and one towards the inside. What these nice pieces of rubber do is absorb shock and improve the connection between the tibia and the femur. A tear in the meniscus is caused by trauma, meaning moving really fast into a weird direction, applying a lot of load very quickly like doing plyometrics and more. What this tear mostly does, besides being painful, is prevent you from being able to bend or lock your knee and it hurts your balance and control in the area. In short, it's not a fun injury to have and what's more is that it's almost if not completely impossible to fully heal since the meniscus doesn't get any blood supply, which is pretty important for the healing process. I tore my meniscus around two and a half years ago by being very stupid and trying out a very advanced leg exercise called the coffee table without preparing well enough for it. You basically place one foot on your other leg's thigh by externally rotating your hip and go down into a low gait pistol. This exercise places a lot of load on your knee and requires a lot of control and strength. And if you lack in any of them, you'll probably break or tear something just like I did. Right after doing it, I didn't feel anything special, but the next day was painful and I could barely put any weight on my right leg because of that. Now, most people's reaction would be to just rest because they associate pain as something bad that should be avoided at all costs. And to some degree, they're right. Pain is our body's way of signaling that something isn't right most of the time, but it doesn't mean you should just do nothing and avoid it completely. The other way people react is by continuing their life as if nothing happened and they just try to ignore the pain as much as they can pretending it's not there. Both of these methods are wrong from my experience. Resting alone won't bring blood into the injured area, which helps with recovery, and it won't strengthen your surrounding muscles, which will help support the injured tissues and so on. And training like everything is normal is also bad because you'll probably place too much load on the injured tissue, which can make your situation even worse and your body won't enough energy to repair and heal the injured area. The way to heal an injury, and I'm not saying that as a medical advice since I'm not a certified physiotherapist, physician or a doctor in any way, I'm just sharing my knowledge and experience, is by combining the two, dramatically reducing load in any painful range of motion, moving very, very slowly, developing strength in the non-painful range of emotion you have, eating well, sleeping well and taking time to recover. Making that switch in your head of I have to rest now is never easy, especially if you're close to hitting a goal you have, but you have to accept the fact that you're injured and learn to be patient. That's your fastest way of getting back to normal. And that's exactly what I did after the injury. I immediately started to slowly move the area without pain as much as possible and started to build my strength back in all of the knee extensors and flexes like the quads, hamstrings and calves by doing drills like the CC squat, going as low as I can while feeling stable and with control. But the one wrong thing I did was that I didn't really diagnose the problem. I just treated it as some kind of a knee injury. And that mistake cost me in accidentally relapsing my injury a few times by getting into very dangerous range of emotion without knowing how risky they are, thinking if I just move slowly, I'll be fine. It took me a year and a half to decide to really take care of it. I did an MRI, went to a knee specialist and found out that I have a torn meniscus. Apparently, being in a deep squat is very risky for my situation because it places a lot of load in the knee and the meniscus and it's passive, meaning my muscles aren't actively protecting me. And that was exactly the problem I had the entire year and a half of not diagnosing my problem. I couldn't figure it out at the time, but whenever I moved inside the deep squat too much, like going down into the 90-90 position for example, after a few reps I would get a sound and my knee would start hurting again. After learning that, I stopped getting into the deep squat altogether and started to strengthen my muscles around the knees again while resting well and avoiding any dangerous positions. And voila, here I am, being able to go down into a full pistol squat, a full CC squat, a split squat and more. If I can summarize it all together, I would say that firstly, you need to diagnose your problem precisely so you know what ranges of motion are dangerous and what aren't. Then you want to build general strength in the whole injured area and move it with no load as much as you can without feeling pain. Once you have that general strength and you feel stable in the area, you want to slowly visit the danger zone until you feel like you're about to reach a painful position, stop there and go back. So if it's a CC squat, go down until you sort of tickle the painful area 
and then go up, even if it's a tiny movement. Basically, in some way, it's like strength training, only that instead of increasing their weight or resistance when it feels easy, you increase the range of motion. The best exercises I've used were ones with a combination of strength and balance work, like the CC squat. You can also just work on balance to strengthen your small stabilizing muscles, like balancing on one foot's blades, toes and heels. With time, your stabilizing and big muscles will get stronger and be able to carry you throughout bigger and bigger ranges of motion, but you have to be very, very patient as it takes time. You'll probably never fully recover from your meniscus tear and there will always be dangers in moving in certain positions, but you'll still be able to do some amazing exercises with this limitation. I, for example, still feel like there's a lot more I can improve in my right knee, even though I can already do a full CC squat. Again, this video isn't medical advice in any way and I highly suggest you go to professionals to be able to diagnose your problem and figure out the best recovery exercises for your specific situation. I'd love to hear in the comments what injuries you're currently dealing with or have been in the past and how you fix them or still deal with them. What's your way of rehabbing them? If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more content like this about how to improve yourself, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, have a good day, good luck, and peace.